The Bermuda's Triangle is unstoppable. Unstoppable proven time and time again. That might have been less than a minute this time. He made that look easy. Set by the chance. Listen to this crowd, Dana White. Listen to this crowd. UFC. I couldn't agree with the crowd more. Manny Bermudez has proven time and time again that he needs somebody of a different specimen to take that zero away from him. There's a fixed position here. He'll let that head out and put his head to the mat. Switches to a guillotine, arm trap guillotine, and now that's it. That's it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. There's the tap. Manny Bermudez does it again. I'm Bill Mahoney. I train uh, MMA, I teach MMA, it's also sport fighting, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, MMA. And he's unique because he's, he's all offense in there. He's, a lot of fighters, when they, they get to a high level, they learn to pace themselves and respect their opponent. Manny's thing has always been, I'm not going to respect anybody, I'm just going to run at them and overwhelm them. And I think that catches people really off guard. I grew up, I was born in East Boston, and then I grew up until I was about 11, and then I moved to Abington, which is on the South Shore. Um, and then right around 13, I found South Shore Sport Fighting, and then, you know, yeah, I had a really good coach at Bill Mahoney, and we, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I just loved to do it. And then um, every single time that, that I would fight, that I would train, like, it just, be, you know, it just becomes, uh, becomes a habit. You're better at fighting the more you do it, and then it's the same thing with Anything. Um, it wasn't necessarily like I wasn't thinking that I need to be in the UFC now and I need to uh, set everything up. It was more like um, I enjoy doing this, I just keep trying to do it better and better and better every time. And then little by little, each goal kind of opened itself up to me. So, you know, I, I see myself getting to a point where I want to be good enough to do it, but I'm not like, you know, then I'm going to rush myself to do it. I'm going to take my time and do it right. Quick. So, so it's just sports fighting. Um, you know, I've worked with these guys for you know, 11 years now or so. And, and they took really, they take very good care of all their fighters. And not just in a way where it's like they're, they're boosting up your ego, they're not necessarily like like holding you up on a pedestal just because you're you know, a good fighter. They, they, they just wean you in the right way. They, they keep you focused. They, if you're not good at something, they, they show you how you can improve at it. Uh, you know, and then like I started off in the kids class. And, and the kids class is awesome because you get kids that, you know, that just started their first day. You get bigger kids, you get experienced kids. You all learn, like, simultaneously. And it's the same way that the, the adults are around, too. Like, you get uh, the pro fighters going with the amateur players, going with the guys that have never trained before. And we all learn from each other. We all get to try things out on each other. And um, I think that's what ultimately get, makes a good fighter. Yeah, so, so when, when I started training, um, it was something that I could feel myself getting, you know, like you, you could visually see the difference and, and the, the more work and effort you put into it. Um, you know, those days I'd get beat up by certain guys, those days that, that I wouldn't do too great. And then, um, you know, little by little you start, you start beating the guys that beat you up, you start um, just performing better, feeling better. And then I think being able to feel myself improving really kept me in the sport. Uh, school was never like, I mean, yeah, I went to school, I went to college. But uh, I didn't finish it, and it was just not like, to me it just wasn't as exciting as this. Because when I would go to school, it would be kids that were geared towards something that I just didn't click with, you know? And I felt like a lot of these kids clicked with their majors, they clicked with what they were studying, they clicked with all the things that they liked. And for me, it was always like, all right, here we are, we're going to go to algebra, we're going to go to pre whatever. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, but I get to go to train later, so that's a pretty good thing. So, I would always go to school because I felt like I had to, and then come back to the gym and feel a lot better, you know, training. And, and I think that's what kept me in the gym, number one, and it kept me trying to work harder at the gym, so I wouldn't have to be in school. I think most of my career has been based off of making short-term goals, and then, you know, just 
uh, continually like chipping away at them. I think when you focus too too uh, too far in the future, you start kind of losing track. But you know, because like progress doesn't happen overnight. Um, and, and whenever whenever you feel like you know things are moving fast enough that you're not doing good enough at what you're trying to do, uh, I think I think that discourages a lot of people. One of the things that I feel like kept me in the sport for so long is being able to just say like. You know, like at this point, where people would quit, people would like stop training. I would just keep on training through those points. And it's not necessarily you have to, you know, go super hard, like through an injury or, or you know, like, like, through something going on with your family. But um, as long as you stay consistent with it, I, I feel like I, I, I was able to see a lot of improvement doing it. And it, <coughs> for me, it just was like not quitting, not quitting that kept me, you know, uh, feeling really good in the sport. Uh, for a long term goal, I think that. I just want to have like a steady career. So I'm not necessarily have to be the best. I just want to be able to be successful. I want to be able to you know, buy stupid stuff and <laughs> you know have my own place at some point. So I'm not looking for anything too crazy. Just something uh, where I can just have my fun and you know this this could, this could be the job that I keep for the rest of my life.